Hi, so I'm going to be showing you how to download Monster Hunter Frontier Z, one of the best and underrated entries in the series, absolutely for free. I will also be showing you a few other ways to make the game look and run even better, on par with more modern gaming standards through a few graphical and frame rate improvements. Now, before I actually get into the guide for downloading the game, I do want to put a few disclaimers. So the way to achieve an uncapped frame rate is using a software called Lossless Scaling, which will set you back about $7. This of course is not mandatory to actually play the game itself, but I highly recommend it for any game that you want to play in the future as it serves to generate frames for games with, you know, maybe internal frame caps or simply if you have a lower end PC and you still want to get a smooth gameplay experience. So I still highly recommend it. You also need a Wi-Fi connection, that's kind of go figures, uh, in order to open the software and run some of the fan servers, but you can create a private local server if you do so choose. I will also leave a link in the description for a guide step by step on how to get that running. Now the game is quite difficult and for a multitude of reasons, but if you're looking for a challenging game with many fun and engaging elements, then you'll do just fine. But to clarify, this is a clear devolution from more modern titles like Files and Worlds, so just be aware of that when getting into this game. Alright, so the first step is to obviously download the game. So in the description, I left a download link for a Google Drive link which will link you to a download link for the game itself. Now, is this game a virus or is this download link a virus? I don't know, but I have, this is the second time I'm going to be downloading the game because obviously I played the game myself and I see them to be I, but obviously I don't know if it's safe or not, but I hope it is safe. Uh, I think it's safe. So, uh, yeah, but you can just get the download link and you should be good to download it if you download it anyways. It's about 4.9 gigabytes, just to let you all know. And obviously you click save, download to desktop or whatever, and that will get the download going. All right, so once the download is complete, you can just drag it to your desktop and you should see this MHFCT 4.1 file. And you just gonna click and open this. It's obviously a seven zip file. Um, I just open it with whatever the default Windows thing is. I don't really know what it's called, but you can ignore all this and simply just extract it. All right, so once you have that opened up, you should see a folder like this, and you should see all these files in here. All you wanna do here is simply double click MHF right here with a little Z logo, and this should open the game. And once you click that, you should see a nice launcher window pop up here, and you're pretty much already halfway done with downloading the game. So once you got this window open, you wanna click down here where it says configure high grade edition. If you click here, you should see this nice 1966 window pop up and you want to go ahead and enable high grade edition so you have access to some uh graphical settings in game i'll put a little menu here where you can see some of the settings you can manipulate that being like god rays anti-aliasing hdr things like that i highly recommend if you want your game to look way better than it usually is click enable high grade edition you can also tinker with the graphic settings here you just click advanced go through this menu and you can change from low moderate and high graphic settings I just go with high. It's not really that big of a change, but still recommend putting it at the highest setting if you can. With that out the way, now you wanna click the display tab over here. Now from here, if you are not looking forward to using lossless scaling for 60 FPS, you can simply just click full screen and call it a day, or you can click your desired resolution. Now, if you are doing lossless scaling, you need to click windowed mode. And from here, then you can change your actual resolution to your desired resolution as loss of scaling does not work with full screen for some reason. I don't really know why, but that's just how it is for the application. And for texture compression, I just keep it as enabled. It's not really that big of a change, but it still helps just to have a little bit more texture loading and more memory saving. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Go ahead and click save. And now we're on to the step of creating an account. So in order to make an account, you have to make a Capcom ID. I have left a link in the description for the link to go and make a Capcom ID. If you already do have a Capcom ID, if you've played a Capcom game in the past, like say Street Fighter 6 that requires one, you can simply just put that one here. But if you have not, then simply just sign up with the link in the description. Now the next step is to choose a server. Now obviously if you click here, you can see a long list of servers you can join. I highly recommend either choosing Rain or Renewal if you're starting out. They, bo they both pretty much offer the same gameplay experience, but Rain being the much more popular one compared to Renewal. But I do recommend doing some research if you do care about certain gameplay elements like the end game, especially for Master Rank slash G Rank. 
I have heard good things about both, but for me, if you're looking for more of a catered experience, if you're just trying to have some fun, Renewal definitely has a more casual and more fun gameplay experience for the end game. So I, I recommend Renewal. If you're looking for a more lively experience with friends and trying to do clans and other caravan quests or whatnot, then obviously go with Rain. That is a much better choice for that case. After we chose our server selection, all we have to do now is simply hit log in. And we should be prompted with a character creation screen here. I've obviously created my character already, but you should see a create a character. Simply create your character. It's not really that big of a deal because you're going to create another character anyway in game. So go ahead and create that character and simply hit start game. Now, once you're in the game, you should see this window for Monster Hunter Frontier itself pop up. And the first thing you want to go to is the option selections. So once you go to options, damn. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is go to key settings. So if you are wanting to play with controller, this is going to be the first thing you have to do to make sure your gamepad actually works. So let's, for this example, I'm going to hook up my PlayStation controller. All right, so once you have your actual controller hooked up, either Xbox or PlayStation, you can simply just go over to the gamepad over on the right here. And this would by default say classic type. You want to switch this to portable type so you can actually use the controller itself. Once you have done that, you can simply go over to button assignment or analog sticks to test out the actual controller itself. And obviously you can test out your inputs here as well. Now, after you're done with everything for the gamepad settings, all you have to do is go over to exit and simply just exit out. You may see a prompt pop up in Japanese text. It's untranslated, just keep exiting through it. It's just simply trying to confirm that you changed all your settings correctly. So simply hit start game, I accept, and then just choose a lobby into the actual uh, Mesoport Plaza. Now loading in here, there are a few more settings you need to change, just a few quality of life changes and some gimmicky and kind of annoying UI changes that need to be fixed. So first hit the menu button, go to options here, and go to display gen quests. Here you can simply just copy the display settings on screen. Essentially, it just gets rid of a bunch of UI, some, some guide stuff. It honestly just helps with the visual clarity of the game. And after you're done with the Gen Quest settings, you want to go over to Input Options. Here, you can actually change the camera control settings as the old games used to have like a weird jank when using the camera controls. But if you just go to camera pan speed here and change to Smooth 2, it feels a lot more akin to more modern Monster Hunter games like Wilds and World. So I highly recommend doing this if you want a more smooth gameplay experience overall. And at this point, you're pretty much ready to go. You're in the game and you can pretty much go on any hunt you want now. Um, if you aren't looking to do any loss lists, you're pretty much free to go and yeah, go have fun. Now, if you do want to actually get that 60 FPS gameplay, your boy loss has got you covered. So you can either buy the tool through Steam here on the Steam link where you can just simply get the tool loss of scaling. Or if you do prefer to have the actual native download, you can simply got it, get it off of the website itself. You see the Steam charts and, of course, the price of $7, so you can simply buy it through there. Either one, it doesn't really matter. They both offer the same exact settings and whatnot, so you're not losing anything if you choose one or the other. Now, once you have Lost of Scaling downloaded, you should see it in your Steam library if you did it through Steam like I did. And this, and this UI should pop up on your screen. So, obviously, you can change around all these settings to manipulate the gameplay, make it look better, worse, really depends on your system. From my experience, I found that keeping most of the things default and changing it just a little bit goes a long way in making the gameplay look a lot better. So you can simply just copy the, the settings you see on screen. So obviously, all I did was change the frame generation to LSFG 3.1 and the scaling type to LS1. Now, once you have chosen the settings of your choice, you want to keep this window open in the background and have Monster Hunter Frontier open as well. Now, from here, all you want to do is left click the Monster Hunter Frontier window and hit Control Alt S. This will put the game into full screen and you should see that your Monster Hunter game now has 60 FPS. I will be showing some hunts that I did with this on as it kind of gets janky when trying to do with OBS and trying to run the 60 FPS as well, but it's still possible to show it off. So I'm showing off here. It looks amazing. Now you have that nice crispy 60 FPS gameplay. Obviously, if you do want to go even higher than 60 FPS, I wouldn't personally recommend it. There is an input delay that comes with using frame generation in general. So I honestly think it's not even worth it to go even higher. And honestly, the 60 FPS is way more worth it for this case because having that much smoother gameplay experience makes 
the gameplay a lot more seamless, especially with how hard the game is with all the bosses in it. It is very hard to deal with all that in 30 FPS. So using that 60 FPS is at the bare minimum is very helpful. And that's pretty much it. Now you can go enjoy the game to your heart's content, sink as many hours as you want, all for free. Hope you did enjoy it. Make sure to like the video if you did find this helpful. And uh, yeah, let's get some hunts. Wait.